Ah, yes, the Acaso Brave 8. It's been four months since I gave you that little teaser video, and I'll touch on a prototype later on in this video. But today I want to show you the final production model, video samples, stabilization samples, as well as audio and low light tests, and even a few side-by-side -side comparisons that help you determine if this is the best budget action camera from Acaso yet. So let's first do a quick overview of its specs and features. It has an Umbrella H22 S85 chipset and a Sony IMX586 half-inch CMOS sensor with dual pixel technology. It can shoot 4K up to 60 frames per second, can shoot 8K time-lapse videos, can shoot photos from 12 megapixels all the way up to 48 megapixels, has a 1.7 inch LCD touchscreen, has a 1.1 inch LCD front screen, it's waterproof up to 10 meters, has voice control and also comes with a remote control, also comes with two 1550 milliamp hour batteries and an included charger, has a USB type C connection on the camera, has nine pieces of glass in the lens and four of them are a spherical. Now all that sounds great on paper, but does its performance live up to these specs? Well, let's find out. Okay, quick little uh, color mode test. This is normal on the Brave 8. Okay, now we are in vivid color mode on the Caso Brave 8. Okay, now we have the Acaso Brave 7 LE versus the Acaso Brave 8, 4K 30 frames per second. Electronic image stabilization is on on both cameras. And a quick little audio test. First the uh, Brave 7 LE, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And now the Brave 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And we'll just see how the image quality looks and stabilization just walking around. Now I have both of these together on a Manfrotto tripod so I can kind of hold them both side by side so you can get a rough idea of what image quality looks like and also stabilization. And now for this comparison we've got the Acaso Brave 7 versus the Acaso Brave 8. First a quick little audio test with the Brave 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And now the Brave 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Just kind of walking and talking just to give you a little rough idea of what image stabilization looks like and also the image quality from these two cameras. And did the Acaso Brave 8 step it up? Okay, let's do another comparison just for giggles. We're going to throw the DJI Osmo Action into the mix because it's a dual screen. It was the first dual screen action camera that was actually released. So since the Brave 8 looks just like it, we'll do a little audio test first. First, the Osmo Action. One, two, three, four, five. 
And now the Acaso Brave 8, one, two, three, four, five, just kind of walking and talking just to see image stabilization and of course image quality, 4K, 30 frames per second. For those of you that missed out on getting the Osmo Action at 199 bucks, don't you wish you got one because now it's like $300 for it. Okay, right now standing behind the camera holding this handheld, just walking around with the Brave 8 just to see how does it look. How does the image quality look out of this? It's 4K, 30 frames per second. It is windy, as you can probably tell from the leaves on the trees. And the microphone may actually pick up a lot of this wind. And if it does, I apologize. But you know, it's Texas. It's either going to be extremely hot, windy, rainy, or cold. One of the three. And today is a little bit overcast. It's cooled down a lot, which is really nice. But I'm really curious about the audio. So what I want to do now, I want to do an audio test. But I want to show you the different layers or different... Well, we're going to have to go inside and do this. Okay, I'm in the garage because it's very windy outside right now and I don't want to contaminate the audio. So right now I'm going to do a quick little audio test with the different audio settings inside the camera. So this is at 90% audio, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, second audio test. Now this is with audio set up to 100%, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, audio test. This is with audio set to 70%. One, two, three, four, five. And now this is another audio test with the audio set to 80%. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so we got the Acaso Brave 7, and this time I paired it up with the XTU S3 4K action camera. Why? Because they're both dual screen, they both shoot native 4K, and I wanted to see how they did in dimly lit situations where it's a little bit cloudy, a little bit overcast and you're going to see here in the shadow area with the trees what that kind of looks like as far as image quality it is a little bit windy outside so what i'm going to do is a quick little audio test outside with both of these cameras first the xtus3 one two three four five and now the acaso brave eight one two three four five And like I said, it's windy, so we're going to do a quick little walk and talk. If there's wind noise, I apologize, but I just want to see what stabilization is on these two cameras, especially if the Acaso Brave 8 has actually improved its stabilization over like the Brave 7. But the XCU S3 is actually a really good action camera, and it's actually got really good stabilization considering its price point. Okay, the Acaso Brave 8 4K, 30 frames per second. This is in the garage with LED lights and image stabilization is on and I'm going to take it outside. It is 9 p.m. right now. Very dark. There's the moon. We'll look at outside lighting here. Look into the garage lighting. Can you see the basketball rim? Probably not. Doesn't look like it on the back screen. And then I'm going to turn off image stabilization and see if it helps out the image quality in low light. Okay, now 4K 30 frames per second, but EIS is off, so it's going to be a little bit wiggly. The same LED lights. It's approximately 9.01 p.m. We'll look up at the moon. 
we'll look at the house lights here. Can we see the basketball rim? And into the garage again. So you might be wondering why I have not done any videos of the Brave A prototype that I got at the end of May this year. Well, its firmware was basic, as in its layout, and it did not record any video. This was basically an initial firmware for the Umbrella chipset and the camera's internal components, but my rep at Acaso said that she'd be in contact with me and the engineers to do some testing and to tweak the firmware. Which honestly I was excited about, as the first thing I saw when unboxing and booting up the camera, it showed 8K 30 frames per second. I immediately thought to myself, wow, they're using Umbrella's brand new chipset, the CB5, which it is capable of native 8K at 30 frames per second. Then there was radio silence for my Acaso rep. After a few months went by and I continued emailing her and I finally got a response from my new rep telling me that the old rep was no longer working for the company. Well, that was the end of the 8K dream for this camera, but then again, Umbrella chipsets are not the cheapest chips out there and a CB5 is quite expensive. So in a nutshell, that's why there was no updates for me about the prototype, but it's nice to see that Acaso is using the Umbrella chip as it's arguably the best chip for action cameras out there, and even GoPro used Umbrella chips all the way up to the Hero 5, and then the GP1 chip debuted in the Hero 6. I'm glad that they're not using the outer lens cover from the prototype, as to me it was a bit too big, and yes, the front lens is removable on the prototype and also the release version, but it's not a threaded design. It's more of a twist and turn, turn it 25 degrees to secure it. Now let's talk about the pros of the Acaso Brave 8. It has great build quality, good video quality, waterproof design, good audio, probably the best from Acaso since the V50 Pro, comes with the two batteries and a charger, remote, and voice commands. Now let's talk about the cons. EIS turns off whenever you're switching between different resolutions and frame rates, which can be very annoying. So if you're going from 4K 30 to 1080p or to 2.7K, whatever the case may be, once you start going around different frame rates or go into photo mode and you go back to video, the EIS will be turned off. So you must remember that because Otherwise, you're going to go back to 4K 30, start shooting video, and wonder why your video is all shaky. Another thing, Super EIS can only be used via the phone app, and it still does not work. And I really don't like the fact that the Acasa Go app asks for permissions to view all of my photos in my phone. Why? And for what purpose? Now, the white balance can get a little bit wonky after a while, and it's normally after it heats up, and it kind of leans to that green very, very harshly. Now audio is only on the left channel and even though it's set to stereo in the menu and yes you can fix that in post and make both channels live but we shouldn't really have to. Now there, the firmware did address some of the audio or that now it is recording on the right channel but it's still very faint. Now I'm not a fan of the door to get to the SD card slot as it requires you to use two fingernails at the same time which can be really cumbersome. I'm a guy, I don't have long fingernails. That may be a small little nitpick, but it is still nitpick. There is no quarter 20 on the bottom of the camera. Now the 8K time lapse, it looks nice, but it's not a true 8K. So when you look really closely at it, you can see that it is just upscale 4K. Is upscaling it from 4K to 8K, is that a big deal? You know, I've always said, if it's a 4K camera, make sure that it is a native 4K, that it's not interpolated. Same goes for 8K. Now, the chipset on this camera is not capable of a native 8K, so that kind of tells you that right there. The 48 megapixel photos, to me, they just didn't look that great. Very crunchy looking images coming out of that. Nighttime footage, you know, once you turn off EIS, it didn't look that bad. But of course, when you have EIS on, all these cameras, they require some really good light for EIS to work. and EIS fights with the low light situation. And by the way, it's an action camera, super small sensor on it. So kind of keep that in mind. Now the biggest con for me, and you know, you can forgive all this other stuff that goes on. Uh, the EIS is kind of a problem for me though, that it always turns off whenever you're going through different resolutions. But the biggest con for me is this $280 price tag. To me, it's way overpriced for what you get. 
Now maybe if this camera was in the $150 to $180 range, but that's as far as I would go. And they've got to fix this super EIS thing, fix the audio on the right channel completely, and just really tweak the firmware. Because for that, you know, $280, you got to remember the Osmo Action was $199. And yeah, they're kind of all sold out now because now they're price gouging because the Osmo Action 2 is about to get released. But I think $280 is a lot of money for this camera. Now, I know that this was a very long video and I appreciate you taking the time to watch this, but I really wanted to delve into the Acaso Brave 8 and show you the good, the bad, and the ugly. I like the fact that Acaso is using the Umbrella chipset now. I like that they bumped up the sensor to a full half inch CMOS sensor. I think with some future tweaking of the firmware that they can possibly get some good performance out of this camera. But at a $280, it's not anything that I can recommend. So hopefully you like this video. I've got some product links in the description below. If you like the music from this video, some art list, you can get an extra two months if you sign up with my link below. And as always, I will catch you in the next review. Bye-bye.